I watch this fight, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you a couple of thoughts on the actual fight, and I'm going to give mo most of the thoughts about what is what's being said about it and the hardcore copium, the copium wars that have begun. And nobody, none of these people, I, I've jumped in a couple places and I'm like, cope, cope much lately, cope. And they're just nothing in response, <laughs> nothing in response. But it was totally predictable for this community that if a white guy uh, was going to be boxing a black guy, and again, how many, how many of us know the name Klitschko out there? How about that boxer? He had kind of a, a strange uh, Russian name, so I might have to look it up. Uh, but he was like seven feet tall, and he defended his title like 55 times and was never knocked down or knocked out uh, at when he was the champ. Does anybody remember his name? And uh, only lost twice, never knocked down, never knocked out. Uh, massive, massive Hulk of a man. And uh, nobody knows, like, Klitsch Klitschko has, Klitschko has what, two degrees or in a doctorate or something? So super bright. He's working in government right now in Ukraine. A mayor, I think, or somebody could fill me in if I'm not right about that. This was a guy who held the title of heavyweight champion of the world. And Americans, especially white women, no idea who that is. But they all know Evander Holyfield. They all know Mike Tyson. You know, they all know you can run down the list. They all know these names because white people, and in particular, are women, white women are targeted with these ideas of how superior non white athletes, particularly black athletes, are throughout our entire lives. Yet again, another reason why white males should not engage in sports ball bullshit nonsense at all. Because all you're doing is reinforcing it. Of course, there are going to be talented non-white athletes on the field, on the pitch, in the game. And all you're doing by worshiping and celebrating them is reinforcing to your white daughters, to your white girlfriend, to your white wife, that non-white athletes are superior. Why would you do that? Stop that. I mean, really, the guys that, are, that should be doing that and can be kind of forgiven are in their 80s now. Under 80 years old, you can't be forgiven anymore. Under 80 years old, it's because you are an inveterate cuck and you like it like that. You get turned on by that. You probably have a whole porn collection of that. So fix yourself, bitch. Stop being a little boy. Stop worshiping the athleticism of other races, loser. Yes, boxing is another form of sports ball. It's just that uh, you're not allowed to hit in the balls in this particular sport. Maybe your balls are your fists. Maybe the ball is your little brain rattling around in your head as you get dumber and dumber after punch after punch. Maybe that's what it is. But clearly, when a white guy was going to be fighting a black guy in the anti-white narrative, a non-white guy, and no matter how cool both of them are, I know there are people out there that uh, they say, well, they're both conservative guys. They're both nice guys and all. Okay whatever. I don't know about them. Maybe that's all true. I don't follow them. I don't know about them. Uh, maybe that's all true. Okay. Irrespective of that, we live in the anti-white narrative. That's in the world around us. And we, by way of our concepts, create our own story. And the anti-whites have to come to our story to propagandize us, right? So we've de proven that for decades now. And so we can make some predictions and those predictions can be very valuable. We can now retrodict. We can now talk about the, uh, uh, the, the, the fight between Paul and Tyson. We can now talk about it and explain it to people around us in a way that benefits our people in a way that draws people into our story in a way that uses the concepts and the, the lexical and dialectical power of the go-free dialogic, a simple practice, just the use of concepts in our speaking about sociopolitical events, we can use these things to cleanse our own mind, to write our own thoughts, to write and cleanse the thoughts of others, to help our people come to an understanding of what's really going on in the world, to be able to have made this prediction. I wish I had known that this fight was going to happen because we could have talked about this on 
a bigger scale. We could have talked about this prior and how we could have been communicating with the people around us. I mean, I, it had the second highest gate of sales in all of boxing history. You think about that for a minute. Think about that. How many people are interested? We're not interested because really who gives a crap? But think about all of our brothers and sisters out there who are interested in this or who are going to be impinged in some way by people who are interested in this. And we could have been communicating and we still have that opportunity now. It's just, you know, post facto. Now we got to do it after the fact. And that's fine. That's fine because it's going to be talked about for quite a little while before Jake Paul decides to throw another event and have another fight. But totally predictable at every level. Yes, Dandy Westman and those others who were on to this, good on you. Big salutes to all of you all to be talking about it from a white positive perspective. Nothing wrong with Mike Tyson. Nothing wrong with the fact he was he was a great boxer back in the day without taking nothing away. Not to, they're not going to take anything away from anybody in their performance uh, and their athleticism. He was a great boxer back in the day. Definitely not a, a Klitschko. Uh, definitely not a number of other. And if I were going to put up any boxers posters, and I wouldn't, but if I were going to do that, then it would be a Klitschko. I could still totally respect Holyfield. I could totally respect for their craft, for the art, for their dedication, all of that. But I am a Westman, and so I'm going to laud and celebrate my people. Nobody does that. In fact, it's immoral in the anti-white narrative to do that. So I'm going to do it louder and prouder than anywhere else. So we could say that, indeed, with, th with this fight between uh, – Jake Paul and Mike Tyson, that the regime, that the anti-white narrative, that the anti-whites in it, that your average person who's going to be villainy signaling is going to be siding with, irrespective of Jake Paul, is going to be siding with the non-white guy. Because in the anti-white narrative, non-whites are always the good guys. They're always harmed by Western kind. They're always exploited. They're always down and, and tried. Doesn't matter. They're going to be a billionaire like so many of them now are. So many of them are in the West. And they're still downtrodden. They're still exploited by the white race. They're still suffering from 10 trillion years of oppression by white babies who are in the womb still. They're still suffering. So everybody is siding. Everywhere I looked, I didn't find a single person that was for Jake Paul. Not a single one. Now, I'm not saying there aren't any, but I am your casual observer. So I'm a, I'm a good barometer of this. I'm your casual observer of the fight and the attention that it was getting. And so I went out there and I looked. No one. Now, Jake Paul is some internet personality. He got started of uh, the very little bit I know about him. He got started when he was like a, a young teen, uh, maybe even preteen, I don't know, but maybe just into the teens, making videos with his brother who was a little years, a couple of years older than him. And they, I think they were on Vine and they had this colossal following on Vine, many, many, many millions. And then Vine, of course, went belly up and, uh, and he went to work for Disney. And he played some Disney Dirk something or other on Disney and uh, made a bunch of money there and got popularity there. But he was also at the same time doing his own YouTube videos, he and his brother. And uh, was they were making too much noise, apparently. And the big they were having big parties and big get-togethers. This guy has grown up inside of youtube inside of the streaming world his whole like formative years was formed by how do i make more of a spectacle how do i get more people to watch me how do i get more people to celebrate me how do i get that's his formative years could you imagine formative years doing this kind of thing and uh, it goes up through YouTube and then starts making 
uh, music. I think it's mostly like rap music. The only video I can remember of his that I saw like uh, 20 seconds of maybe was a rap video where he's he's driving. And the only reason I remember it is because it's a beautiful white Lambo and the doors are open and it's a total spectacle. The guy is like a master of the spectacle to get you to look at what he's doing. And it seems like this has completely engendered a lot of jealous hatred of him. Now, is he anti-white? I don't know. I don't follow him. Maybe he's said anti-white things. Maybe he's done anti-white things. I don't know. I can see that he's blonde and that he's white and that uh, he doesn't look Jewish to me. So if anybody wants to fill me in on that, I don't know. But maybe he's done. Maybe you all can fill me in on any anti-white uh, garbage that he's said or participated. I would assume he has if he's been in the public eye. So this is not a defense of him. This is just totally a neutral observation of facts and events. So I know he made some he made some songs. I think they were all rap big doing crazy things. The Lambo was gorgeous. I, 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 I don't know if that was he probably rented it for the purpose of the video at the time, but he's got more than enough money now. And so he worked his way up into these like spectacle boxing matches. He had what's known as a, a white collar fight, which is where people, I think that's where it started for him. They come together and they either have very little or no training in uh, boxing. They get into the ring and they duke it out for a dough and people show up and they wanna see a bunch of novices go at it because that can be funny and interesting uh, and you can see some real shots so it can be interesting there some real shots that are landed and then he just progressed to let's make it more and more of a spectacle so if you all know more about why uh he is disliked other than because he's able to make such a spectacle of himself calls himself the problem child make such a spectacle make a lot of money doing it and uh, i think going through good looking women in fact i think i have a video here of whoever he showed up with, a good-looking woman. If if it's if there's more to it than that, fill me in. Bottom line, though, is he's white. He could be the nicest guy ever. He could be uh, not known and hated. But if he's fighting a non-white guy, the vast majority of people in the West, in America, are going to be siding with the non-white guy. And that, my friends, is a real window to understanding where we live, what we live in, what's the narrative? Is it some sort of random narrative that changes for every piece of news? Is it some sort of narrative that changes for every, every regime in the White House, every regime on Downing Street, every regime? Is it where, what is the, what is the narrative? We can see very clearly because this is consistent over the course of our lives, parents' lives, grandparents' lives, great-grandparents' lives, children's lives, grandchildren's lives, that there is an anti-white narrative. And that that anti-white narrative is, is girded, is supported, is based in the anti-white moral imperative. It's immoral to us because it victimizes us. But we're talking about a social morality of a country, of a nation, of a people, of a civilization, indeed of all of the West, the social morality of all of the West, it's an immorality and it's anti-whiteism, which means every time a white guy is going to be in a contest with or not, what do we see when it comes to teams in sports ball? What do we see when it's a non-white team or mostly non-white team playing a white team or mostly white team, the white or mostly white team is the bad guys. They're portrayed as the villains. They're portrayed as the, the people who are have it over time and they're the ones who should win. And the non-white people or the mostly non-white team, well, they're the always the underdog and they're the one that everybody wants to see win. And they're the ones. So we come to Jake Paul, Mike Tyson boxing match with all of that baggage. We come to this with fans who are booing the guy who got this old ass out of a rocking chair and they a guy that they love and worship for some reason. And again, Mike Tyson not taking anything away 
from the boxing prowess when he was a young man. And he obviously deserves respect for that and the talent. And I get it. I get it. I get it. He's an old guy. And these people love him like what? He is the second coming. Why? Why is that? Why aren't they as excited about white boxers? Well, everything I just said. So it's like it's like I told you before when it came to the sports ball here, football, American football in Washington, D.C. When RG3, the quarterback, was recruited, a guy who was god-awful in college for quarterbacking, who already had a major injury and several surgeries on his knee, which should which means he's done. He's not going to be able to last in the NFL. A guy who is way too light to play as a quarterback in the NFL, a guy whose playbook was restricted to a dozen plays because he was too stupid to remember anymore. When the Washington Redskins, what they were called at the time, recruited him, in all of D.C., I live here in D.C., all of D.C. acted like Jesus in Christ had, had, come down, had come down eating fried chicken from heaven and was going to save the nation, was going to save not only the Redskins, but the fucking world. Personalized plates in Virginia. Virginia leads, I think, the country in personalized plates uh, of different iterations of RG3, and it showed up everywhere. Stickers. He hadn't touched the field, the professional football field. And people with any sense at all, and it's just I mention it and I, and I dip into it because it is such a – magnificent example of how anti-whiteism poisons the brains. And this is how we have to understand the folks around us. They have brain poisoning. That's what's happened to them. That's what anti-whiteism is. They have lived lives inside of fiction that their subconscious mind, which controls 95 to 99% of their life and more, live lives in this fiction where the non-white person is the wrongly put upon, the exploited in every case. So they've witnessed it firsthand, they believe. And he always or she always comes in there and saves the day. So RG3, people, it, articles were going out, every radio station, people were naming their children who were being born. He hadn't played a game. He hadn't played a single game. They were already naming their children after this guy. Does that, I mean, what a sick, white people, what a sick population that we have and, and that we need to understand. I mean, Siegfried is talking to these people in the Twitter space and it's like none of them or most of them or some of them are totally not taking the context and reality into consideration at all and the population that we have, and the tools that our victimizers wield, the knowledge that our victimizers, they don't take any of that into consideration. So what happens? RG3 gets on the field, and he can sucks. And he sucks. And it's nothing but excuses. And, and what do the excuses entail? Blaming white people. Blaming white people everywhere for RG3 sucking. I mean, this guy sucked. And I normally don't use that word. I dislike it for that purpose. But he sucked. He sucked like he was in a in bathhouse. He was just all over the bathhouse. That's how bad this guy was. And doesn't, didn't he get a beautiful, with the, with the mighty payment that the Redskins gave him, a beautiful white wife? Or am I confusing him? I think somebody tagged me. I think he got a beautiful white wife immediately with the massive sum of money that the Washington Redskins, now the commanders, because they are all a bunch of Claudine gays, uh, gave to him to do nothing, to be lousy for season after season. Mike Tyson sucked. Mike Tyson sucked. And he knows he sucked. And anybody out there Who's going to, I hope it offends you because it means you're anti white and you're going to have to address this problem in you. Tyson got out there. This was Jake Paul did everything he could. And remember, this is no defense of Jake Paul. I don't know who he is. If he wants to jump in the live chat, say hello. 
I'll give him, I'll send him the, the invite link and he can come on and talk about it. He, he seems to me like maybe he's wild enough to do that, the problem child. So if he wants to come on and talk about it and defend himself or defend Mike Tyson or whatever it is, hey, the, the mic is open to you if you want to show up. Having said that, Jake Paul, from what I could see, did everything he could to make Mike Tyson comfy and to give Mike Tyson an environment where Tyson could fight, where Tyson had a chance to actually fight and contend with Jake Paul. Because quite honestly, Jake Paul could have finished Tyson in the first round. That's how much Tyson sucks and how good Jake Paul is at boxing. No, he's not from what I, I'm, and again, I'm not like some uh, serious follower of uh, professional boxing. I've been in a, a fight or two myself over the years. Uh, I have been in the ring myself a time or two over the years, but I'm no like big follower. But I can tell you though, he can fight. He can hit really hard. You can just watch any of the videos, his size, the reach uh, that he has, uh, that, that uh, right that he has, he can fight. He created an environment, only eight rounds, only two minute rounds so that Mike Tyson would not get wore out, so that Mike Tyson would be able to literally fight Jake Paul. What did Mike Tyson do? Totally expected, given if you just look at his last fight and some of the other fights, Mike Tyson has a problem. A, and, and if folks remember, it, it seems like maybe they choose to forget, Mike Tyson underwent this uh, many, many years ago, hypnosis to overcome the problem of just giving up in the ring. Does anybody else remember that? Does anybody else remember back in the day where he was getting these sessions of hypnosis when he was in his prime because he had this problem of when he realized that he wasn't going to be able to fight, when it just seemed too overwhelming, he just would give up. That's what he fucking did. Now you have the heavy copium coming in to say, oh, he could have not only not only Dandy Westman Wright, that people are saying, oh, Jake Paul, I, I cannot tell you. I've probably I cannot even tell you the number of how many videos white women, non-white women, white guys, non-white guys. I mean, just everywhere. Why and why white women? What are, what is your problem saying? Well, why don't you just go down to the old folks' home, Jake? Fight a few of them there. Seriously? This is supposed to be Iron Mike Tyson. And Jake Paul did every, not only did he do everything he could to make a, an environment where Tyson could legitimately fight Jake throughout the totality of the fight, not only did he do that, but then he took it easy on, Ty, on Tyson. Here's the reality. Mike Tyson came out in round one and tried. And he realized in round one and a tiny bit into round two that he didn't have a snowball's chance in hell. He realized he got hit a couple times. It hurt. Uh, it dazed him. And he realized he wasn't going to be able to get in tight on Jake Paul. He wasn't going to be able to chase him around the ring because he doesn't have the stamina for it. So he just gave up. He just said he's getting $20 million to be in that ring, to go the distance or to, to fight whatever it was. I don't know what the exact contractual agreement was. Does he have to go all eight rounds or whatever? But he all he had to do was get in that ring for $20 million. So he ended up after, if you watch it or watch any of it after the fact, You'll see exactly what I'm saying, or those who watched as well. He started in the second round just standing flat-footed because he gave up. Just listen to his speech after his last fight where he said, uh, where he said, oh, I'm never fighting again. I don't have it in me. I didn't want to do this. I, he gave up. That's what he did last night. He gave up, did not want to fight. And what happened to, which is pretty shitty which is pretty shitty of him, to be quite honest, because he's getting paid $20 million to make it a fight. And 
halfway through the second round, you could clearly see at that point that Jake had to start going easy on Tyson because he wanted to give the audience a spectacle. He wanted to give the audience a show. So here, this awful guy, this awful guy that all of these fans wanted to see lose. He came out to, uh, what is it, Phil Collins in the air tonight. And the, the, the house was booing him. And Tyson comes out, just walks out. He didn't even care. He didn't even want to try. But he just walks out. And uh, the people everywhere, online, in the stadium, going crazy for the old guy. Uh, which is asinine that anybody would think that there would be a hope with a 58-year-old as beat up as he is. Maybe if Tyson had all the training and never got in the ring, and by the time he was 58, he didn't have all the war wounds over from the years. Maybe he, he'd have a better chance against a 27-year-old that can fight. But no, he's got a lifetime of being in the ring, getting hit in the head, and all the war wounds. Everybody who, every guy out there who has played sports of any various types, we know about the war wounds. We know about how you get older, you get older, and, and it, they hurt more, and they get hurt easier and everything. So this was ridiculous. I don't know who it was. It wasn't Dana White. Somebody said that uh, is magic possible uh, and Tyson really going to get in there and make a, and, and accomplish something and then wrote afterward, uh, magic isn't real. No shit. I'm glad that you're wealthy and that uh, and that I'm in poverty compared to you, that you couldn't figure this shit out. But that's exactly what happened. He came out, he threw the towel in halfway through the second round, and then Jake Paul hated everywhere, went easy on Mike Tyson for the remainder, and then at the very end, in the final 10 seconds, bowed to Tyson. Yeah, I said that right. 10 seconds left in the eighth round. They slapped the mat. Letting him know, you better throw throw it all down now. Put it all, uh, empty the tank right now, because this is the end. And Jake Paul decided to bow to him. Obviously, a really smart move uh, by Jake. Uh, but nonetheless, what did this get the white guy? Remember, Jake Paul, he's the whole white race in this spectacle. Remember that. It's like Daniel Penny right now. It's the whole white, every time there's a white guy, it's the whole white race. A black rapist goes on trial. It's not all black rapists, much less all black guys and all black women and all black children. But when a white guy is convicted of something, it's all white people he's, he's, or he's being tried for something. It's all white people on trial. It's all white people that have the noose of suspicion drawn around their necks. It's all white, even the white people who are still in the womb. It's all white people. And so Jake Paul in that ring was representing all white people when he was being, irrespective of your opinion of Jake, you need to be mature enough to be an adult here and do the right thing, think the right thing, and ha have lucidity uh, of your thinking. You can hate Jake Paul uh, for whatever reasons. You need to understand when they're hating on Jake Paul, when they're booing Jake Paul in that ring, irrespective of his behavior, they're hating and booing you, white man, you, white woman, you, white child. This isn't about Jake. Have you figured it out yet? It's about us. Let that silence sit in. It's about us. And so now what happens after the fight? The white race, not Jake Paul, the white race is an exploiter. Exploited an old man. So an anti-white piece of shit that before the fight was saying, oh, Tyson's going to drop him. Tyson's just going to whoop his ass. And they have no excuse, no, no like logic to defend that position. It's just a black guy and a white guy. So. In the anti-white narrative, the black guy's going to win. He's going to whoop his ass. And then, same anti-white. As soon as the fight's over, and goddamn, 
Tyson landed 18 punches. Jake Paul, 78 punches, and he wasn't trying. He was half there. 78 punches to 18 punches. The same anti-white who said Tyson's going to drop him in round one turned right around and said, Jake Paul exploiting an old man. White race exploiting the non-white race to make himself rich, to make himself fam- to make yourself rich, to make yourself famous, white person. Have you figured this out yet? Then the copium takes several other forms, and I'm going to get off of, of this. I want to see what y'all say, if y'all have anything to say. We're going to get on, on to our next item. Uh, but Jake Paul, third highest paid athlete as a consequence of, and now with this fight, I don't know, maybe even more. I think he made $40 million off of this. So he's he's doing something right. But these same anti-whites out there, now they're saying, oh, the fight was rigged. Yeah, the only rigging to the fight was that Jake Paul, when he saw Mike Tyson give up, went easy on him the rest of the time. Danced around and went easy on him the rest of the time. That was the only rigging. It was a real fight until Tyson gave up. Jake Paul wanted, he wants money. He wanted Tyson to fight him. And you could see that in the first round, Jake Paul was at moments where Tyson got in close and landed a couple of heavy punches. You could see the concern on Jake Paul's face like, holy shit, here we go. Oh, here we go. This is Iron Mike and I'm fighting Iron Mike. And you have all that reputation from the past of Mike Tyson. And so naturally, Jake is going to uh, have concern at that moment. But as soon as he was able to tie him up and then squirm away and Tyson realized there was no chance, Jake was la- his hands were faster than Mike's. His reach was longer. He had infinitely more stamina. Tyson gave up. So now all these anti-white copium uh, bitches out there, now they're all like, oh, the fight was rigged. Uh, they weren't actually supposed to fight. Why is the fight rigged? Because the black guy didn't drop the white guy. Oh, it was all rigged uh, because it was just about making money. And and who's at fault? Who are they saying is at fault for this? Not the black guy who participated. You guys have to have eyes and ears for what's really going on. It's the white guy that they're blaming. Immediately, they say, the white guy set all this up. The white guy is to blame for, for the fight being rigged. Not the black guy who, who had to have participated in the rigging. I mean, you're saying he didn't throw any punches because it was rigged. But no, there's no F you to the black guy. There's only an F you to the white guy. And the coping goes on and on. They're, they're showing these videos. Uh, I'll, show, I'll show maybe one or two where they show Mike Tyson in the ring practicing where he's throwing punches against a guy who is not gloved up to throw punches back. And they're like, look at him here. Ergo, he was going easy on Jake Paul. Bullshit. Jake Paul 100% could have flatlined Mike Tyson in round one. He could have flatlined him. If they were to get back together in another six months, another year, now Jake Paul knowing that the reputation of these devastating punches from Tyson is gone, he would destroy him in the first round. Let's, let's have an actual uh, a round, a full round, not one of these like baby rounds, geriatric round, have a full round and Tyson will be flatlined in round one. That's the reality. Why do I mention it? I'm not into boxing. I mention it because what does the anti-white narrative say? The reality is that the white guy here would maybe put this guy in the hospital for months, maybe lifelong injuries for the rest of his life. That's the reality. 
the anti-white narrative, the white guy exploited him or Tyson participated and the white guy is evil for rigging everything, never ends. I'll just, no, I'm going to show this first because this is probably why a lot of people are jealous of uh, Jake Paul. This is how he showed up to the fight. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> I'm feeling it too. All right. I'm feeling it. All right. And I, and I heard, I don't know if it's true. You all can uh, chime in and let me know. Was uh, the pair of trunks that Jake Paul wore, were they really $1 million? They were, they were bedizened in, it appeared, diamonds. Did it really cost a million dollars? Talk about somebody who is who has literally formed his, his formative years uh, in creating spectacles. One more really quick, and then you'll see what I'm talking about. Here is Mike, and, and in great shape for a 58-year-old. I mean, no doubt about it. Okay, so Mike Tyson working out, throwing a couple punches, and then taking a 10-minute breather that they don't show you. Throwing a couple punches against a guy who isn't throwing punches back. And then they show you this clip to show you, to, to claim that this is uh, somehow rigged. Wrapped during, during training, there were health issues. And All right, really actually not much in that one, or it's glitching maybe. Let's see if the other one. Okay, here's one more. And then look, this is, I just want to give you an example of the anti-whites at work. And you're going to see this with the white people uh, who are just vagues, vi villainy signaling anti-whiteism. You'll see that with the anti-whites and of all races, it's particularly upsetting when it's white. You'll see it at the office. You'll see it at the coffee shop. You'll see it at the bar. You'll see it at the saloon. You'll see whatever. And they're going to be making these sorts of excuses across the spectrum of sports. Here you have a tiny clip. Right here is where Mike said, whoops, I got to stop or I won't get paid. Tyson lands uh, a, a jab, and then they act like, well, he, he's not going to, he's got to remember that he's just, it's rigged. He's not going to get paid if he finishes off. What are you talking about? He land, it's, he's in a boxing match. He landed a jab, and Paul was not hurt by it. So, anyhow, I'm not going to show any more of that. Just wanted, uh, breaking the internet overnight. This was another. I won't. Show it. Uh, it was Paul throws a a wild over the top right, which he has knocked people out with or knocked them down with, and Tyson ducks under it from his skill, uh, learning how to box over all these years, being in the ring a professional. He ducks it, and then doesn't have a punch, and they're at, at, at that point, and they're acting like. These anti-whites acting like, oh, well, again, uh, evidence that it was rigged all along. This is so insane. Open your eyes. This is so insane how, how anti-white this world is. Because it's the white guy. Because it's the white guy, it's, well, the black guy could have destroyed him. Or the black guy was used by the white guy. And doesn't this ring true of all of your entertainment media, your novels, your movies, your made for TV movies? Isn't that the exact same? If the if a non-white person is going to be a villain, they're always a villain because a white person has caused them to be pressed into service, persecuted as a child, whatever it is. So even if Tyson participated in the rigging, it's all Jake Paul's fault. It's all the white guy's fault. And then they still continue with this. 
Uh, oh, the other line was, wasn't rigged, but Tyson went easy on him because Tyson could have destroyed him. Because in the anti-white narrative, the white guy always loses to the black guy. This is how disturbed and distorted, and I can't believe that you could watch this. You would have to have your head, watching this fight with your head up your ass to not see that Tyson quit when he realized he wasn't going to be able to stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with Jake Paul. 